Okay, for 81, you're really trying to, you know, integrate these things and you move out in a certain way. And the way it's written, I want to point out, um, let me highlight for you, is this guy over here. There is a problem with this, though. I want to point out if I did that, you know, I could certainly write down, integrate that guy. I could write SI down of X. Limits integration would be pi Y uh, up to pi. Sorry about that. But the problem is evaluating that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid that, and I want to try to visualize it to see if I can move this thing around to make the integration a little bit easier for me to deal with. So let's, as written, I'm going to try to get the region down for you. So the first thing I'd write down is uh, we're doing dx. So the lower limit is x equals pi y, and this means that y is equal to 1 over pi x. So it's simply just a line. And the line sort of looks like this over here. It's got a slope of about one-third. And the upper limit is going to be x equals pi. That's going to be a vertical line. looks like this over here. All right, so we got those two lines going. And again, this is x equals pi. And this is y equals 1 over pi x. All right, so let's do the, um, the y values. And I'm, I'm moving out from it now. And so the lower limit is going to be y equals 0, and the upper limit is going to be y equals 1. Well, y equals 1 is up here. It actually intersects there, and y equals 0 is down there. So I, I see the region they want. This is the region over here. This is the region they're looking at. And certainly, we're integrating a surface over that, and um, that surface is uh, sine x over x. This is where things get a little bit uh, crazy. I, I'm going to try to switch the limits of integration, right? So instead of d doing the dx first, I want to do the dy first, all right? So let me, let me write that down. It's always complicated to switch limits. So I'm going to put dy down. Now, someone says, why would you do that? Because I can easily integrate sine x over x with respect to y because uh, it's just going to be sine x over x times y. Uh, question is, can I switch the limits around? Let's take a look. All right, what I want to do is um, I'm going to talk about a rectangle over here. And I'm going to talk about the upper limit, and it's along the y's and the lower limit. So I'm going to set a lower limit. If I'm going along y's, it would go from 0. And what would the upper limit be? Let's think about that. It would just be the, the line, because that's what the y is, x over pi. All right? So that part's done. Next part, what are we going to do now? We're going to go along the x's. And where are the x going to go from here up to there? So that's from 0 to pi. All right? So what I want to do is, so th th this is tough. I, I'm not saying it's going to be easy for you to do. A lot of times we can't do this at all. Um, the, 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 the region is just too complicated to do what we just did. What I want to do is I just want to go to the notes to make sure that you should be seeing this clearly in the notes at this point. Let's, let's see if we see that. And it's over here. So 0 to pi. I'm going to scroll back to show you that. So we get to 0 to pi, then 0 to um, x over pi. That integrand dy dx. Switched it. We're going to work our way out. All right, how do we work our way out from the inside out? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is this over here. That's an easy integration. Sine x over x. The limits of integration, I'm sorry, y. I forgot to put the y down. Um, we treat sine x over x like it's a constant. And then it goes from 0 to x over pi. Well, let's pop that in. This is, they, that's what the y equals, so it's x over pi times sine x over x. And then when you plug in 0 there, you're just going to get 0 for the second term. So this one simplifies pretty nicely. I'll write it down for you. It simplifies to sine x over pi. A much easier integrand, by the way. Do I see that written down? I see it right over here. Then what do we do? We're going to do that second integration now. How do I do that? I need to get the guy's antiderivative. By the way, this is 1 over pi. It's a constant. The antiderivative of sine is going to be minus cosine. Limits of integration there are going to be from 0 to pi. 
Let me get my eraser out. I'm kind of done with this business over here. And let's go for the evaluation. What are you going to get over here? 1 over pi. Let's start evaluating. Minus cosine of pi is minus a minus 1, which is plus 1. Minus a minus, which is plus the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. What do you get? 1 plus 1, which is 2. You get 2 over pi. All right. These are better pictures for you. I want to put down the reason giving you a better picture is hopefully you're paying attention to that. This is x equals pi. This line over here is y equals 1 over pi x. Um, the point here is going to be pi comma 1. The point there, kind of obvious, 0, 0. The point over here is going to be pi 0. This is the region under which we're integrating. What did we do? Let me get my eraser out. Done with this. I understand the picture. We took a rectangle like this. And what we did, we did the, uh, the y first. The, the, the upper y is going to be y equals pi over x. And the lower y is going to be y equals 0. That's why we put that integration down. We went from 0 to pi over x. And that's what we did up above. That's all we did, right? It's good if you can do that. You're going to avoid a lot of complications if you can switch the order sometimes. Sometimes you don't have to switch the order, though. Are we getting the same answer we get in the notes? Yes, we're getting the same answer. I also did the integration using Sage, and you may want to look at those videos if you're interested. Thank you.